All right, we're back with objective one on, and we have our image of a parabola right there. That's what we're talking about. And we're talking about being able to define this thing as a conic section, which we already did. We know that if we take a cone, a double cone, and we slice it parallel to one of its lateral edges, we make parabola. So there's the first part of that objective. The second part is being able to define a parabola as a locus. What the heck's a locus? Well, in geometry, you've pretty much already talked about a locus. You just didn't call it that. So a locus is just a set of points that all have some sort of property in common. The definition that you learned for a circle was a locus definition. So take a look right there in that green box there. A circle is a locus of coplanar points. Let me stop right there. The word coplanar all means uh, all the points are on one plane, same plane. So it's a collection of points, x, y that are equidistant from a given point. Equidistant means the same distance away from a given point called the center, okay? So the center is the point HK in the picture over there to the left, and the, the distance, the equal distance from the center to the circle is called, of course, the radius. So I can use that locus definition to come up with an equation for this thing. And it's pretty simple. All I need to say is that the distance, let's pull up the pin here, this distance right here is always the same. What's it always the same as? The radius. It's just one number. It's always 5, it's always 12, whatever that number is. How do you find the distance between two points when it's on the coordinate plane? You've got to use the distance formula. Let me write that right up here. So d is equal to square root of you take the difference of the x's, so x2 minus x1 squared, plus the difference of the y-coordinates squared, y2 minus y1 squared. And this comes from the Pythagorean theorem. Could you imagine just tracing yourself out a right triangle right there? It's just a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And you want the length of the radius, so you have to take the square root of that. So I'm going to apply that distance formula on the picture that we have right there. And it just goes like this. I got the square root of, we're going from this point right here, so x minus h squared plus from the y coordinates, y minus k quantity squared. All of this is equal to the radius. Okay, but we usually don't see it written with square roots in it, so to get rid of that square root, I just square both sides of that equation, and here is the equation of a circle. x minus h quantity squared plus y minus k quantity squared is equal to r squared. Where the h, h and the k, those are the coordinates of the vert of the, uh, the center. And bear in mind that these things lie to you, both of them. Before it was just the x that lied to you, but now it's both of them because they're both in the set of parentheses with the x and the y together. And then, of course, the r is the radius. Now, I'm showing you this not because we're talking about circles in this lesson, we're going to talk about circles in the next one, but to demonstrate exactly what a locus is and how we're going to use the locus to come up with the equation for a parabola. All right, so talking about parabolas, this is the way that we've looked at parabolas before. We defined it as a function. Remember, one input goes with one output. Every input has just one output. And so it will look like that. f of x equals a times x minus h quantity squared plus my k. This was a parabola that could only open upwards or downwards. It could only be a beard or it could be a mustache. But what about all those parabolas that open to the right or to the left? What about those parabolas? Don't we get to talk about those? And the answer is yes. It's just that those, if it opens to the right or to the left, they don't fit the definition, function, uh, definition of a function so we're going to talk about them in this one in terms of it being a conic section. Okay, so here is the locus definition of a parabola. So let's digest this. So a parabola is a set of coplanar points, so again, all on the same plane, that are equidistant from two things. They're equidistant from a fixed line called the directrix. Look at this picture right over here. See the red line, the directrix, and a fixed point called the focus, this point right up here. 
So it is the set of all points that are the same distance away from both of those things. Look in the picture. D1 and D1 are exactly the same. Remember in geometry the way that you have to measure, the way that you measure between any two points is along a straight segment. But if you're trying to measure the distance from a point to a line, it always has to be perpendicular. So what this definition is saying is that this piece and that piece, they're the same number. We're saying D2 right here is the same number as that. Now, um, D1 and D2 are not the same thing, but that's not what this definition is saying. So let's, let's go ahead and, and look at this on Sketchpad so that you can see the relationship between this, this line that's called the directrix, this point that's called the focus, and, uh, and the vertex. So according to the locus definition of a parabola, it's the set of all points that are the same distance away from two things, the focus point and this line that's called the directrix. Okay, so if I move this point, this point x, y, anywhere I move it, it's going to be the same distance away. And you can see that measured right here in these two blue lines here. They always stay exactly the same length. Now remember, whenever you measure the distance between two points, it's just a segment, just connect it. But anytime I measure the distance from a point to a line, it's always measured perpendicularly. And so that's why this line always stays nice and straight, perpendicular to perpendicular to the directrix line. Okay, so let's just move this thing around so you can see the interesting things that can happen. So this focus, if I move this focus further away from the vertex, it's going to make this parabola flatten out. If I make this focus closer to the vertex, it's going to shrink this thing down. So the smaller the focal length, smaller it is, then the, uh, the skinnier your parabola is going to be. And notice, of course, that the vertex and the focus are always on the same line, and that line is the axis of symmetry. Now I can also change the direction of this directrix. It is possible to have a directrix that's not vertical or horizontal. You could have one um, that is, you know, has some sort of slope to it, but we're not going to tackle those in this unit. We're just going to do the horizontal and the vertical ones. So here it is being a horizontal, and again, I can move the focus. I can move the focus over to this other side, and it flips over here, um, and I can move this point along here, and I can see that it the distance from the focus to the directrix always stays the same. And that's what the definition, the locus definition says for a parabola. Okay, so let's look at the different parts of a parabola. So the vertex, we always call the vertex HK right there. It's in the same place that we're used to seeing a vertex, right? It is the turning point um, on our parabola. And uh, it is always the halfway point between the focus and the directrix. And this has to be true because that's what the definition says. The definition says that the distance from the focus to the directrix is always the same. So that means that the vertex must be the midpoint between the uh, directrix line and the focus. Okay. The vertex and the focus are always on the axis of symmetry. This is an important thing to remember because whenever you have a collection of points, whenever you're going to graph it, these are things that you want to keep in mind. The vertex and the focus are always on the axis of symmetry. Okay? What's the relationship between the axis of symmetry and the directrix? What kind of lines are those? They're always perpendicular lines. Just take a look in the picture. These things are always perpendicular to each other. Okay. One other thing, and that is called the focal length. The focal length, which we're going to call P, is the distance from the vertex to the focus. The distance from the vertex to the focus, we're calling that the focal length. Okay. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to pause right here. I'm going to take you back to my website so that you can get an absolutely stunning and amazing flow chart that I put together for you to make sense of all these conic sections. And all of this information will be on there, so maybe it'll lessen the amount of stuff that you have to take for notes. So let's take a look at that. So let's assume that you know how to get to my website, and we're under the unit, the unit 8 conic sections here. So 
I'm going to click on that, and on the main page for that, there, the last uh, little item there is the Conic Sections flowchart. So it's a PDF file. Once you click on that, print that thing out, whenever you click on it, this is what you'll get. It's pretty excellent. I did make this and made it all from scratch, so I deserve complete credit. You can go ahead and in the comment section and tell me how phenomenal it is, because it is. Anyway, so what we're doing today is this section over here on the parabolas. And uh, by the end of this unit, we'll have this whole entire thing covered. You'll look at all that information you're going to be able to digest and understand easily using this flowchart as a guide. All right, let's get back to that lesson. Okay, so you have yourself this printout of the flowchart, and you can see right over there on the top left-hand side, that's where we have our parabola stuff. And all of this is detailed for us. So let's see that we have ourselves a vertical directrix, a vertical directrix. And these are not the kind of problems that we're used to seeing. Because if we have a vertical directrix, this means my axis of symmetry must be horizontal. And if it's horizontal, that means my parabola has to open to the right or to the left. Okay. So let's look at all the different points that are on here so that it makes sense. Of course, we always call the vertex HK. The focus, well, the focus is always P units away from the vertex. So since this is along a horizontal axis of symmetry, the only thing that's changing on this line, oops, the only thing that's changing, uh, there we go, the only thing that is changing on this line is the Y coordinate. So if I say that this distance right here from here to here is P, well, it's not the y distance, it's the x distance. Blah. I take my h plus my p, and there's the new x coordinate for, for the focus. So I could say that, that right there, that distance right there is p. Okay. All right, what else do we have? Well, since the directrix is the same distance away from the parabola as the focus, if the right side is p to the left side, this must be minus p. Not minus 5, where is that coming from? Where is that coming from? Minus P. So um, for the vertical directrix line, if my, uh, my vertex goes through the coordinate H, I subtract P from that so I can back it up to get the equation of my vertical directrix. So X is equal to H minus P. Okay. And then finally, since the axis of symmetry is going through both the vertex and through the, uh, the focus, its equation is just y equals k, because anything on that line is just k. Okay, so let's, let's maybe uh, apply those uh, different points to this problem. Now, the vertex of a parabola has coordinates 2, 5, and the focus is at 4, 5. When you're doing a problem like this, I would suggest making yourself a picture for this thing. So let's try to do that. Let's make ourselves a picture um, I need a two five, so one, two, one, two, three, four, five. There we go. There is the vertex point, and the focus is at four five, right there. And the parabola always wraps around the focus. And this is this will be our axis of symmetry right here that connects both of those. And my parabola has to go through. No, I'm gonna no, I'm gonna have to redo that one. Here we go. Parabola has to go around like so. This means that this one has to open to the right or to the left. This one specifically opens to the right. So let's answer all these questions. You'll see that these questions are very easy to answer now that we have a little sketch of what's going on. What is the focal length? The focal length is the distance between the vertex and the focus. Well, right here this one is at 2 and this one is at 4. The focal length is just simply 4 minus 2, which is 2. There's the focal length. A positive 2 means that it's going to open towards the right. A negative 2 would mean that it would open towards the left. Is the axis of symmetry vertical or horizontal? Well, I already drew the axis of symmetry in there, and it was obviously a horizontal line. So question number three should be pretty easy. Is the directrix vertical or horizontal? 
If the axis of symmetry is horizontal, then the directrix must be vertical. Let's figure out where it is. If the uh, focal length is 2, so that's 2 to the right from the vertex, if I back that up 2 to the left, 1, 2, the y-axis here is actually my directrix for this problem. So that one is a vertical line. And does this parabola open up or down or left or right? Obviously, since I've drawn my little picture here, I can see that this one is opening towards the right. Also, this is what I, wanna, I want you to pay attention to. Since this line that joins the focus to the vertex, which is the axis of symmetry, since it has the same y-coordinates, this means that it must be horizontal. So there's something right there for you to think about and to bear in mind. Okay, so we're going to stop right here for this video. When we come back to the next one, we're going to talk about how to come up with the actual equation for this parabola.